Hi everybody, I'm Miss Beth and I'd like to welcome you to the High Gas Fee Studio and to the I Am a Masterpiece series. As many of you know, High Gas Fee stands for Have I Got a Story for You? And today, Have I Got a Story for You? It's about my favorite artist. He was an illustrator and his name was Norman Rockwell. He was born a little over 125 years ago in New York City. He had an older brother, but his older brother was only a year and a half older than he was. So when little Norman came along, his parents were so excited because they knew these boys being close in age would grow up together, have a lot of fun, and hopefully be really great friends. And that's what happened. They had a wonderful family life. There were three things that Norman loved to do as a boy. The first one was during the summer, his family would take time off and they would go into the country and he and his brother Jarvis would go hiking and running around and swimming and catching frogs. It was a wonderful time. There was a second thing that Norman loved and it was in the evenings. After dinner, his father would sit down and gather the two boys around and he would read to them, usually from a Charles Dickens book. And the boy's imagination just soared as they tried to figure out what was going to happen next and what the characters looked like. And that was the third thing that Norman loved to do. He found out when he was about five years old that he loved to draw. While his dad read, he would sit at the kitchen table with pencil and paper and he would sketch out what he thought that the characters look like. When he turned 14, he asked his parents if he could quit school and go to only art school. And his parents agreed. He began to go to art classes and his skill level began to get better and better and better. When he turned 19 years old, his teacher came into him and told him about a magazine that was looking for an illustrator. Do you know what an illustrator is? Well, an author writes a story. An illustrator draws a story. Norman loved illustrations. He loved drawing stories. The teacher encouraged him to send in one of his drawings to this magazine to see if they might want to buy it. And he did. The magazine was called Boy's Life, and it was a Boy Scout magazine. And this is the picture that Norman sent them. It shows a Boy Scout standing behind a ship's wheel. Now you will notice that there's not very many colors in this picture. At the time that this painting was done for the magazine, the magazine could only use black, white, and red in any combination of those colors. And so Norman had to be pretty creative to do a drawing that showed all the detail that he needed using just those colors. But he did a fabulous job and the magazine asked him to do many more of these types of paintings for the cover of their magazine. Now Norman loved his job with Boy's Life, but he had a dream. He had a dream to paint a picture that would go on the cover of the most popular magazine in the United States. It was one that everybody loved to buy and to read. It was called the Saturday Evening Post. He thought if he could get to be a good enough illustrator to get on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post, then he would have arrived as an artist. He continued to practice and his friends began to encourage him to submit a painting to the Saturday Evening Post. Oh, no, 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 Norman said. I'm not good enough yet. I need to keep working on it. As the years went by, his friends continued to encourage him. And finally, he, he got enough courage to paint a painting and submit it. He worked on it for a long time. He knew that, that using only red, black, and white was going to limit him a little bit, but he tried his very best. He finally came up with a painting that he was super proud of. He wrapped it up, then he boxed it up, and he took it to the offices of the Saturday Evening Post. He walked into the door and a secretary was sitting at her desk. He said, I would like to submit a painting for the editor to see and possibly use in the magazine. 
And she said, um, well, do you have an appointment? And he said, no, I, I didn't know I needed an appointment. She said, okay, I'll take it in anyway and we'll see what he says. So she takes his painting into a door and then she comes back out and she sits at her desk and she begins to work away. Norman had a seat in the office and he sat and he sat. An hour passed by and nobody came out of the door. Two hours passed by. Still, nobody came out of the door. Three hours passed. Norman began to worry that perhaps the editor didn't like it at all and just shoved it aside. Maybe he even threw it away. He gathered his things and he began to get up to leave. When somebody opened the door, out came the editor carrying his painting. He looked down and he said, is there a Norman Rockwell here? Norman's like, oh, oh, I'm right here. I'm right here. And he said, we really like this painting and we would like to put it on the cover of our magazine. We will pay you $75 for it. Oh my goodness, Norman could not believe his ears. He was so excited, he would have probably done it for free. Well, the editor put it on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post and the people saw it on the newsstands and they bought up all the copies. They loved it. And this is the painting that he did the very first one for the Saturday Evening Post. As you can see from looking at the faces of the three boys, some are happy and some are not. One boy is stuck doing something that he really doesn't want to do. Can you tell what that is? Yeah, he's having to babysit. And his two friends pass him on the street and look at their faces. They're kind of giggling at him and making faces. Can you tell where they are headed? Well, from the baseball glove and the caps they have on, they're probably going to a baseball game and making fun of him because he could not join them. He had other responsibilities. Well, like I said, the people loved the painting. And so the editor asked Norman if he would paint some more. And he did. He painted hundreds of paintings for the Saturday Evening Post. And fortunately, the colors began to change. They were able to add other colors to the printing press. So Norman wasn't trapped in painting pictures that were just black, white, and red. Here's one. It's called Marble's Champ. Again, an illustrator is telling a story with his painting or his drawing. What is the story you see here? Again, if you look at the faces of these children, they tell you a lot. I have a feeling these little Boys are getting skunked by this girl. Look at how many marbles she has. Look at their empty bag. And here's another one he did. Again, look at the faces of these children. It's called Missing Tooth. That little girl is so excited that she lost a tooth. Look how big her mouth is open and her friend is looking to see how it looks. But you see another little girl standing in the background. And what's her face telling you? Yeah, she looks pretty sad, doesn't she? I wonder why. What do you think? Well, in 1917, something bad happened in the world. It was called World War I, and the United States was in it. And Norman, being super patriotic, meaning he loved his country, he wanted to be a soldier. He wanted to go help fight in the war. So he walks down to the recruitment office. He opens the door and he said, hi, I'm Norman Rockwell and I want to be in the Navy. Well, the recruitment officer looked at him and he said, boy, you're so skinny. You're so little. Step up on these scales. Norman stepped up on the scales. The officer looked down. He said, you're underneath our minimum weight requirement. You're eight pounds too light. There's no way you could be an officer. Plus, you have no muscles. The enemy could just squish you like a grape. Oh, man. He felt so bad. He left the recruitment office feeling terrible. And then he got an idea. He went to the store and he bought dozens and dozens of donuts. Then he bought Bunches and bunches of bananas. He took them on home and he began to eat. And he ate and he ate and he ate all night. 
donuts, donuts, bananas, a little bit of water, more bananas, more donuts, donuts, bananas, donuts, donuts. Oh, his belly started to get so full. The next morning, he walks back down to the recruitment office. He walks in and he said, sir, ooh, my name is Norman Rockwell and I'm here because I want to be in the Navy. The officer said, weren't you in here yesterday? I told you, you're too skinny and you don't weigh enough. Norman said, do you mind putting me on the scales one more time? The officer said, okay, if you say so, step up on the scales. Norman stepped up on the scales and the officer looked down. Boy, I don't know how you did it, but you gained eight pounds overnight. Welcome to the U.S. Navy. Wahoo! Norman was so excited. He was going to get to be a soldier in the Navy. Well, when he got there, they found out that he was an incredible artist and, and such a good illustrator. And so they put him to work doing something else instead of fighting. They asked him if he thought he would be able to paint some pictures that would make people feel better about being at war. You see, everybody's morale, the way they felt, was really low. War is a very difficult thing, and people are often very sad during a war. And so Norman took on that challenge. How could he paint something that would make people feel better? And he came up with an idea. He came up with a soldier named Willie Gillis. And he showed Willie Gillis in all different situations. Here's one that he did. It's called Package from Home. As you can see, Willie Gillis is in the front and he's received a package from home. Can you read what it says on the package? It says food. Oh, I, I wonder what was sent. Was it cookies? Was it a cake? Maybe there's some letters in there. Well, you can tell from the painting that his buddies also saw that it said food. And he suddenly gained a whole lot of friends, hopefully, and knowing Willie, he shared what was sent from home. And here's another one. It's called Soldier Coming Home. So this young man has been off at war, but he's come home for a visit. Oh, look at his mother's face. Her arms are outstretched. She is so excited to see her son. Little brother is running down the stairs to greet his brother. Even the dog is excited to see him. And there's a lot of other characters in this painting with different expressions and different feelings. And then there's this one. It's called Home Sweet Home. That soldier, Willie Gillis, has gone up to his room. He's taken off his uniform and he's crawled up under the quilt into his own bed. His mom has already laid out a little cup of tea or maybe hot chocolate for him on the bedstand. And you can tell from his face that he is very content. It is definitely home sweet home. Well, Norman, after the war, was very, very famous. He continued to paint pictures for the Saturday Evening Post and for other people and other magazines. And uh, when my children were little, we bought this book, it's a Norman Rockwell book, and I would sit down with him and we would open up the pages and I would have them tell me the story that they saw illustrated on the page. My children loved doing that because they could make the story whatever they wanted it to be. One of their favorite stories or illustrations was this one. It's called Going and Coming. It's about vacation. And on the top picture, you can see that the family is going on vacation. Look at their faces. Oh, the father's driving and he's smoking his big cigar. One of the boys is hanging out the window with his dog and he looks almost as excited as the dog does. And the little girl is blowing a great big bubble with her bubble gum. And then you've got that brother in the back seat who is making faces at other cars as they pass. And then you can barely see behind him a woman. It's Granny. She has kind of a stern look on her face. She's probably wondering, what have I gotten myself into? But on the bottom of this painting is a 
picture of them coming home. Their faces have definitely changed, haven't they? The father is all hunkered over the steering wheel. He looks exhausted. The mom has fallen asleep in the front. And the boy who was so excited before looks a little less excited. And even the dog looks a little subdued. The girl's bubble on her bubble gum is much smaller. And then the boy in the back seat that was making all those faces at everybody, it looks like he's asleep or about to fall asleep. And the only one who has not changed much is Granny. She's still probably wondering what she's gotten herself into. And then another one that my kids really liked is Boy on a High Dive. Have any of you ever been on a high dive before? You can see from the sign underneath the diving board that it's 20 feet up. This boy has climbed the ladder and he's walked out onto the diving board, but I feel like he realizes that it looks a lot higher from up on the diving board than it did from the ground. And so he squatted down and he's holding on for dear life. What's fun about this painting is you can make up the end of the story. What does he do? Does he back down the stairs or does he get enough courage to jump off? And then my kids loved this one. It's called April Fools. April 1st is April Fools. And Norman Rockwell would paint a painting that was all mixed up. Here's one that he did. Can you see some things on here that don't look quite right? The man is reading a book and he's holding what? Yeah, a fishing pole. But is the fishing pole facing the right way? And what's he catching? And has anybody ever seen a blue lobster? And he's wearing skis on his feet. And he has a halo over his head. And a flying penguin? And look at the trunks of that tree. At least there's a phone on the edge of the tree if you needed to make a phone call, even though there's a bird nest in the top of it. And what kind of tree is this? I see something that looks like an apple, but then I see something that looks like a baseball hanging from one of the branches. And on the right side, there's a bunch of grapes. I don't think grapes grow on trees. There are so many things that are wacky in this painting that often I will look at it again and find things that I had never even seen before. We love the April Fools and there's quite a few of them. Well, Norman was probably and is probably considered one of the greatest illustrators of all times. He painted hundreds and hundreds of paintings for the Saturday Evening Post alone. And you could go visit a museum that's in his studio. It's in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. And I had a real good visit there a few years ago. Made me appreciate Norman even more. He died when he was 84 years old and he was very famous at the time. I would recommend as you are staying at home right now that with the help of your parents or somebody who's taking care of you, that you go on the internet and you can go to www.nrm, stands for Norman Rockwell Museum.org. They have a virtual museum that you can look at and you can see all kinds of paintings and drawings by Norman Rockwell and read even more about his life. I want to thank you for joining us on the I Am a Masterpiece series featuring Norman Rockwell. And I want to encourage you to come back again on YouTube and to stay healthy and safe. Goodbye, everybody.